This is an ultrasound study that was performed on the carotid arteries in a 39-year-old patient who was thought to have a carotid artery dissection. This is a dual image. We can see what looks like a splitting of the uh, proximal ICA uh, into two separate components. Uh, the grayscale does not help us as much. This is the proximal common carotid artery. There's a little bit of minimal thickening, uh, but otherwise normal. This uh, shows the normal Doppler signal in the proximal common carotid artery. This is the distal common carotid artery. Again, some minimal thickening here and perhaps down here. I would have steered the color in the opposite direction to get a little more favorable angle. Some of these dropout areas where there's some flow could be perpendicular to the Doppler line. This would not happen if steering was done in the opposite direction. There is a normal signal in the distal common carotid artery. Here we have the proximal ICA. We can see the division into a false lumen and true lumen uh, at the area of the dissection. Now it's clear this is a dissection from this image because we see the thickened enema at this location. And most dissections, unless they're traumatic, will have some thickened enema. And we see the thickened enema here. It disappears. We get flow behind it. And here's the thickened enema with the defect in it allowing flow to create a false flow lumen in the proximal ICA. Here's some more of the false flow lumen, part of the enamel flap. Uh, this may be where it re-enters, uh, but uh, it, this could just be motion of the flap. In fact, it looks like it continues onward here. So here's the enema, here's the flap, flow goes underneath the flap and continues in this direction. Here we have flow in the true lumen, and this is a normal Doppler signal. The resistance, uh, the resistive index is 0.64, uh, and uh, that is a normal number for the ICA. Here we have some more of the flap. It's markedly thickened in this area. Another picture. Now we've got the false lumen again. The steering, this is coming toward the top of the screen. It would have been much better to steer the color in the opposite direction, but still a reasonable image. Uh, it looks a lot like an ECA, and sometimes these get confused with external carotid artery. The reason is there's higher resistance. There's only probably a small defect distally allowing this blood to enter the true lumen. Here we have a dual Doppler image. Uh, again, the steering, I think, would have been better in the opposite direction. I'm not a big fan of uh, dual Doppler images because we have no idea what flow angle was used for the uh, ICA true lumen. We only can see the Doppler angle for the false lumen, and that looks like it probably uh, you know, is a bit off. It really doesn't matter if we're looking at resistive index, whether our angle is correct, however, because this is an angle-independent calculation. And we can see for the true lumen, the sonographer got a calculation of 0.64 resistive index, which is a normal uh, number for an internal carotid artery. For the false lumen, a resistive index of 0.64 nine was obtained. This is marked markedly high and abnormal for an internal carotid artery. Again, flow lumen, a little better image now. It's, uh, you know, the steering, certainly this is flowing down. If we're going to measure this, we want to steer it the other way. Uh, but this is a good signal, and the resistive index is under 0.6. Again, normal. Here we now are finding a, a better steering angle. We've calculated the uh, uh, resistive index. However, they put the calipers in the wrong place. This peak certainly is higher than this, and they, they wanted to put the second down here to get a calculation 
uh, of the true um, resistive index. One more of the ICA. This is proximal. Here's mid. We still see the flat. Here's mid. We still see the flat. The true lumen is still giving a reasonable signal. A little bit of turbulence or sawtooth here. This is because of the motion of the flat. These things kind of buzz up and down during systole and create some turbulence. This is an image of the distal ICA. We can still see a little bit of the flap, so it extends beyond our, our point of view. And uh, here we get a signal in the distal ICA, perfectly normal for the true lumen, and a high resistance signal for the false lumen. Now this is erroneously called the ECA, and uh, this shows why temporal oscillations or temporal taps can't always be used uh, to diagnose the ECA. In one study, uh, I found that 30% of common carotid arteries and 30% of ICAs showed the oscillation maneuver when, when they were sampled during a temporal tap maneuver. Uh, the other uh, just point, teaching point we make about this image is there's no reason to have the color Doppler go all the way down into the vertebral area. It could have been cut off because of the higher flow rate, a little more information in this area. But this is still the false enema. This is way too small to be an ECA. And look at how thick the enema is here. It looks like this is the break point again. And it's being interpreted as the bifurcation. This is probably not the case. Here's another one that's labeled ECA again, but uh, again, there's no evidence of an enema, very thin tunica adventitia. Uh, we don't even see the media here, but this is the flap. This is not a division of the artery. Here's the true ECA. Look at the difference in size and uh, here the oscillations show. So again, be cautious when you use the temporal oscillation or temporal tap maneuver. These don't always give you the information you expect. Uh, you can try it on yourself. Uh, put a Doppler signal in the proximal ICA, do the temporal tap maneuver, and quite often you'll see a fluctuation in the ICA as well. Here's a look at the vertebral artery. It is flowing toward the screen, so it's red. Uh, it's because of the way the Doppler angle is, and uh, this is a normal flow direction and a normal Doppler signal. The right proximal, and again, they're doing base of skull oscillations. Uh, there's no reason for this. We can see a vertebral signal. We know this is a vertebral artery. Here's the right subclavian artery. We get a triphasic signal. These uh, peak systole is, is perfectly normal, and we've got reverse flow. Nice spectral window, very rapid upstroke, normal signal. Now let's go on the left side. Here's the common carotid artery. Looks perfectly fine. Normal uh, filling of the lumen with color Doppler. This is probably a little reverberation or even a, a side lobe showing up in the hypochoic area of the slide, uh, or the image rather. We now go on to the proximal, get a nice normal signal. We look at the distal, a little enamel thickening again. Uh, the, you know, the flow, or the image should have been frozen in systole and we, we fill further to the wall here. Uh, normal distal common carotid artery signal. Proximal IC looks good. Again, I question the timing of uh, freeze here. Uh, it, uh, you know, I, I doubt there's plaque in this configuration. Here's a nice signal. It's even worse, the timing of updating. This all looks like disease. This is just that they froze during uh, late diastole or early, or late systole or early diastole. Here's this line shows where they update it, and you can see it's at a low flow portion of the of the cycle, and that's why they've got all this black here. You always want to uh, attempt to freeze during systole. 
flow separator in the carotid bulb shown nicely. Again, timing the freeze is questionable. Timing the freeze is questionable again here, but we see the ICA and uh, it's filling largely with flow. We've got a normal signal in the uh, middle uh, internal carotid artery on the left. We've got a normal looking distal ICA, normal looking signal. The ECA looks good. It's filling uh, with color throughout the length that's interrogated. And we've got a normal signal, temporal oscillations uh, shown once again. Here's the vertebral. We see vertebral shadows, normal looking vertebral. Uh, again, base of skull oscillation, but they were really not necessary if we see the vertebral shadows. Here's the left subclavian. Again, timing of filling. It looks like there's a lot of disease here. This may not be really be the case, particularly here. It looks like a lot of disease, but yet perfectly normal triphasic signal, normal velocities. So this patient does indeed have a right proximal ICA uh, dissection. This dissection uh, has not obstructed the uh, uh, or affected uh, the flow within the ICA. Uh, and uh, the uh, Sinaiver demonstrated very well the presence of the intimal flap the high resistance flow in the false lumen and the lower resistance flow in the true lumen of the vessel.